Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Mindful Monday. If it's your first time joining us, always feel free to type in comments where you're coming from, any questions, comments. If you have a topic you'd like to hear more about, we'd love to hear about that too. You can also DM me. Uh, and if it is your first time joining us and you type the word mindful in comments, after the broadcast, of course, I'll go back and put a link, which if you follow, you'll get our weekly PDF cheat sheets, which are simply bullet points of what we cover each Monday, as well as the hypnotic recording I created on releasing limiting beliefs. So today we are here to talk about reining in that inner critic. So um, common examples of negative inner thoughts that kind of are indicative of an inner critic might be perfectionism, you might feel shame, avoidance, um, you might deprive yourself of things, you might be experiencing guilt. And just know that allowing this inner critic to rob you of the present moment of joy and of opportunities is not in your best interest. So that's why we're here to talk about it. So three reasons that you might be having this inner critic or too critical of yourself and what to do about it are going to follow. So the first is your expectations of perfection might just be ruining any sense of accomplishment. So striving for excellence is normal, it's reasonable, it's perfectly sane, it's motivating even, if you will. Uh, yet if you never feel satisfied despite doing your very best, then this can be a sign that you are too critical of yourself. That inner critic is kind of running havoc in your mind. And so do the following instead. Number one, get comfortable with imperfection and read Brene Brown. Read all about Brene Brown. We've talked about her in the past. She is amazing. Um, and see the value in failure. In NLP, we say there is no failure, only feedback. Um, SpaceX's uh, motto is fail fast and learn faster. So failure is something that we all experience, but there is value in it. We're learning from it. All right. Um, require yourself to find something positive in any kind of uh, situation, regardless of the outcome. So focus on the positives, if you will. Um, you can also adjust your expectations and set more reasonable goals if you are overstriving, if you will. And really focus on the bigger picture. See the bigger picture in general, that you are learning, you are growing, etc. Also, you can validate your emotions uh, without letting them take over. So it doesn't mean don't feel your emotions, but it means don't stuff them. Don't throw a temper tantrum. You know, um, if you allow yourself to, in an appropriate time, of course, feel your emotions, they will pass. Whether they're good or bad, they're going to pass rather quickly, too. So you do want to feel your emotions and you want to validate them as well. And then um, if it's a work environment, you might even designate some of your work to others when you can, if you're feeling overwhelmed and that's making you kind of crazy. All right. So reason number two that we might be having this inner critic run havoc in our minds is we compare ourselves to others. And this leaves us feeling inadequate. And so you have to remember that our senses are overwhelmed all the time anymore. Um, they're overwhelmed on a daily basis with all sorts of images, with uh, messages, social media, etc. you know, with our cell phones that we can't get away from them, basically. Yet we forget that these images distort reality. They're often um, portraying un unattainable things, as many of them have been filtered and edited. I use filters. We all do. It's, it's fun. Um, but you have to understand that that's what's happening and not be like, oh, I don't look like that kind of thing. So you want to remember that and um, know that the flowers do not compare, as they say, and neither should we, basically. So some of the things that you might want to do instead is to really limit your time on social media, understanding that when you own a business, such as I do, or you're doing broadcast, you know, that's not necessarily going to be something I can't stay away from social media, but what you can do is you can spend more time creating than consuming. And so that makes it, you know, more positive for you. Practicing daily gratitude. We've done Mindful Mondays on gratitude all by itself. Um, that's going to bring the positive into your mindset as well. And you want to really verify, acknowledge, and celebrate your strengths. It's, it's all about you sometimes, not usually, but sometimes it's all about you. And then view, understand that comparison does happen. So view any comparison as a motivator and use it as we say in NLP as a modeling experience. So of course, if you're wanting to become a public speaker, you might be like looking at other public speakers, but don't look 
at other public speakers like Tony Robbins and be like, oh, I'm never going to be Tony Robbins. I'm so inadequate. And instead, what you want to do is you want to NLP model them. Think about, oh, I wonder how he does this or get inside his mind. We have techniques for this. I won't go into too much detail here, but you really want to kind of model their behaviors, their mindsets, as well as you want to look up to them instead of be jealous of them or feel bad about yourself. That's the appropriate way of, of growing, if you will. Uh, the third reason that we have is compliments sometimes feel hollow rather than motivating or affirming. So if you find yourself in this position where you're kind of downplaying compliments or failing to acknowledge your own accomplishments, you might be experiencing just general low self-esteem. We've done Mindful Mondays on those as well. Or you could be experiencing what they call imposter syndrome. And so this is just another way that the inner critic wreaks havoc in our minds. And so it happens a lot with very highly self-critical people who are often highly intelligent and capable. So it doesn't mean that you can't do these things. It means you're kind of telling yourself these things. And so these highly intelligent, self-critical people tend to struggle due to the litany of shortcomings that they're hearing or telling themselves in their own mind. They're focusing on their inadequacies, inadequacies, if you will, rather than on their strengths. So you want to make sure your mind is really focused on the positive because you're going to attract more of the positive. So some of the things to do instead uh, is to require yourself when you receive a compliment to say thank you and nothing else. Nothing else. That's it. This also is very complimentary, if you will, to the person who complimented you because you're accepting their compliment rather than pushing them off. So it's a nice way of setting rapport as well. You want to also avoid the urge to deflect or change the subject because you're feeling awkward. So the more you do these things, the more you're going to do these things. It becomes habit, if you will. And then the next thing that we want to tell you to do is to review the praise in your own mind instead of all the negative stuff. So review the praise, review the positives rather than the negatives. And then focus on the specifics of the praise. It can teach you a lot about what your strengths actually are if you're not too sure about them. And then ask yourself in your own mind how this praise makes you feel when you're not criticizing it, when you're not involved in this imposter syndrome kind of thing. And then in NLP, what we say is we want to anchor in the praise. So anchoring in NLP is typically done by a, a hand position. I typically touch middle finger to thumb. You can make anything up. Name the feeling when you're having a positive feeling. It has to be in the peak of the feeling. Take a nice big breath in. Exhale as you fire your hand anchor. You can think or say your word or phrase, and you'll want to do that two to th uh, three times total, actually. And so you want to keep doing this no matter what it is. You want to anchor in all the positives because 21, 28 days to create a habit, if you do this once a day, you can go say your word or phrase as you take the breath in, exhale, and all of these positive feelings come back to you. So you can really shift how you're feeling in just three breaths, which is amazing. Uh, some of the other techniques is you can really watch yourself for global statements such as I never, I always, I can't, I shouldn't, I'm so, um, because it's all or none thinking. It's that black or right, white thinking, and they lead to kind of internalizing um, whatever it is you're saying or thinking in your own mind to becoming beliefs, which then makes it a deeper layer within you. Reframe your thoughts. So instead of thinking, I never do anything right, you can say, okay, I kind of missed the mark on this one, and I've learned how to do better next time. Uh, identify any voices from the past in your own thoughts. If you grew up in a critical environment where you heard as a child, if you don't or you'll never amount to anything, if you don't do this, um, then remind yourself that this is an old movie that's playing in your mind and you can now rewrite the script any way you want. I like to say when I hear my inner critic, cancel, 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 control, alternate, delete kind of thing. You can also thank it and say, I know you're trying to protect me and we're moving on. Focus on self-forgiveness and self-compassion. Put uh, the focus on yourself rather than others if you're in comparison mode. And know that the inner critic is a habit that you can learn to control. So thanks for watching Mindful Monday. Make it a great one.